Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Cognitive Curiosities on Our Own Devices. I'm Jean Messi, and I'm back here at the Delivert Museum in Winnipeg having a look at a Victorian era optical curiosity. Now, a few episodes ago, I covered stereoscopes, which were a very popular form of mass entertainment in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but those weren't the only ones. This is a nib pen containing what's known as a Stanhope viewer. And this is a little lens assembly that allows you to view a micro photograph a few millimeters square. Now these were popular at around the same time as stereoscopes, and these types of viewers were embedded in all sorts of everyday objects. Now the story of the Stanhope begins in 1851 with a gentleman known as John Benjamin Dancer, and he was an instrument maker from Manchester. And he was also an early pioneer of photography, and indeed he is credited with taking the earliest known photograph of Manchester in 1842. Now professionally he was known for crafting some of the finest microscopes in the British Isles, and in the 1850s he started to combine his love of microscopes and his love of photography to create some of the world's first micro photographs. Now, this was something that really wasn't possible in earlier years due to the limitations of photographic technology. So the two most common photographic processes at the time, the daguerreotype and the calotype, really didn't lend themselves well to reproduction or to enlargement or miniaturization. However, in 1851, a gentleman known as Frederick Archer invented the wet collodion process, which did lend itself to miniaturization. And so in that same year, John Dancer used a microscope and the wet collodion process to produce micro photographs. And the feat that really brought him to public attention was accomplished in 1854 when he reduced a 680 word plaque that had been erected in the memory of inventor William Sturgeon, the creator of the first electromagnet, down to around two millimeters in diameter. And Dancer produced thousands of these micro photographs and exhibited them all across the British Isles and Europe and became very well known for this new technology and art form. He was also responsible for a bunch of other innovations. For example, he patented one of the first purpose-built stereo cameras to produce stereographs. And to learn more about that, please check out my video on stereoscopes. And he also was the first to introduce limelight to the magic lantern, producing the world's first modern large format projector. So in 1857, Dancer first exhibited his micro photographs in Paris, where they came to the attention of a French inventor named René Dagron. And Dagron saw great commercial potential in microphotography, but unfortunately these photographs needed a microscope to view, which were not only very large and bulky, but also very expensive to manufacture. So he started looking around for a more economical and compact way to magnify these images. And he found it in the form of something called the Stanhope lens. And this was invented by the third Earl of Stanhope in the late 18th century and consisted of a biconvex lens that could magnify images up to 300 times. Now, although these suffered from distortions, chromatic aberration, and other issues, they were significantly cheaper to produce than conventional microscopes, and thus were widely used by scientists and doctors. And what Dagon did was to modify the Stanhope lens by cutting off one end and extending it to produce a cylindrical plano convex lens. And the planar section was placed at the focal plane of the lens, and this is where he pasted the microphotograph using an adhesive called Canadian balsam. And because the photograph was right at the focal plane, it was always in focus. And this produced a very easy to manufacture and very compact viewing device with high magnification that could be embedded in all sorts of ordinary objects. So Dagron patented this system in 1860, and in 1862 he exhibited his so-called Stanhope viewers at the London International Fair. He received an honorable mention, and his Stanhopes came to the attention of none other than Queen Victoria herself. And Dagron would later present the Queen with a series of Stanhope viewers containing microphotographs of the royal family. And just as with stereoscopes and other technologies that came to the attention of the royal family, this attention caused sales of Stanhopes to increase. And in that same year, 1862, Dagron opened a factory in Gex, France, which at its peak employed 150 craftsmen and was putting out 12,000 Stanhope viewers every single day. Now, Stanhopes, by virtue of their compactness and ease of manufacture, could be 
inserted into pretty much every type of object you could imagine. They were put into pendants, into rings, into needle cases, into pens like this one. There was a luthier by the name of Jean-Baptiste Villome who put them into his violin bows, and they would contain microphotographs of famous violinists and luthiers such as Paganini and Stradivarius. Uh, one of the most common types of Stanhope viewers were these little tourist tchotchkes, usually little cast pewter monuments. And uh, for, for example, you could go to Washington, D.C. and you could get a little pewter model of the Capitol building that, when you looked into it, showed you views of the city. Or if you went to Paris, you could get a little model Eiffel Tower that had views of that city. This is an extremely popular little trinket. And Interestingly enough, and probably unsurprisingly, one of the most popular uses for Stanhopes was for displaying pornography. So in the 1850s, the French government instituted a crackdown on pornographic material. And so when Stanhopes came into fashion a decade later, uh, manufacturers wasted no time inserting all sorts of titillating images into them. And these were a lot more compact and discreet to carry around on your person and view in private. So just like the internet was for porn, well, Stan hopes were for porn as well, just like a lot of other technologies. Now, while Stanhope viewers were mainly a curiosity, microphotography did play an important role in the fields of warfare and espionage. So during the 1870-1871 Franco-Prussian War, Paris found itself under siege, and so it was very difficult to get information in and out of the city. So one way that they got around this was using balloons, and to learn more about that, please check out my video on the balloon hydrogen gas detector. And they also used pigeons, which of course have been used for centuries to carry messages all the way up through the Second World War. The problem was that a pigeon can't carry all that much weight, so you're severely limited in the amount of information you can send on a single flight. Thankfully, however, René Dagron's microphotography process handily solved this problem by allowing him to shrink entire pages of text down to a microphotograph of about 6 by 11 millimeters. And each of these weighed about 0.02 grams, meaning that your average pigeon could carry around 20 of them. So this greatly increased the amount of information that could get in and out of the city. And it was a quite successful postal system. So moving on into the 20th century, microphotography was widely used by intelligence agencies all around the world in the form of microdots, microphotographs that are reduced down to the size of the period or a tittle on a page of text and usually pasted in the place of a period or tittle or hidden in some other innocuous object. And this allows you to smuggle out a great amount of information and get it past enemy inspectors and sensors and the like. And this form of hiding information not by encoding it, but by physically concealing it, is known as steganography. So it did have its practical uses despite being mostly a popular curiosity. So just like stereoscopes, Stanhope viewers started to fade in popularity in the early 20th century due to competition from more advanced forms of entertainment. However, they continued to be made in smaller numbers. And indeed, the factory that René Dagron set up in 1862 in Gex only closed down in 1972, having produced Stanhope viewers continuously for 110 years. And you'll still find Stanhopes being manufactured today, either reproductions of Victorian-era models for collectors, or things like religious trinkets, say a little pewter cross pendant that contains a Stanhope containing a page of scripture or a prayer. So a very old technology, but one that, while not as popular as it was in its heyday, is still around to this day. So let's actually have a closer look at this particular example. As I said, this is a nib pen. This was manufactured around the 1890s in Ireland and is beautifully carved from what is known as bog oak, which is oak that has fallen into a peat bog and been preserved and turned into this very dense ebony-like material by the action of the tannins and other acids in the bog. And the Stanhope is located in the handle just in the front right here. And the way you use this is you hold this up in front of your eye, and at a certain distance you start being able to see the image. And you can pan it up and down and side to side in order to see the complete micro photograph. And then here is an actual enlargement of the photograph, and you can see that this is a tourist Stanhope that shows you different views of Dublin. 
Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and a huge shout out to Mark Trainer and Inez Bonacosa here at the Dalnavert Museum for inviting me back to produce this video and introducing me to Stanhopes. I had actually never heard of these devices until they told me about them and this, so this was a really fun one to learn about and research and present to you. So I'll see you next time on another episode of Cabinet of Curiosities where hopefully I will be back here at the museum looking at more Victorian era tech. Until then, I'm Gilles Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.